Hey everyone, welcome to a bonus episode of the Craft Parenting Podcast, and also, happy belated Mother's Day. I hope all of you mothers out there had a very relaxing and wonderful day. My name is Joe Ludwig. Hey, thanks for being here and supporting us on our podcasting journey. Last week in episode 57 of the Craft Parenting Podcast, Caroline sat down with some good friends of ours to discuss some of the realities of being a mom. It was a great conversation that went well over two hours. Rather than cutting that conversation down, you get an extra special bonus episode this week. This one is kind of all over the place, and it's a little longer than some of our other bonus episodes, but I still think it's a great conversation. Before we get to that, though, make sure to share the show with your friends and follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. All you have to do is search for The Craft Parenting Podcast. If you like what you hear, consider leaving us a five-star review. All of this really helps the show grow. Now, enjoy the show. Probably felt better because you gave up. Uh, Katie gave up. I did. Uh, social, social media, media for, for Lent. Lent. I only mm-hmm. sent you one thing though, right? Because you were like, you were like, I gave it up for Lent, and I was like, oh, I think I only sent you like. I think one you or sent me videos. a couple videos. Oh, did I? Um, I, I? I might have sent you like two or three. Yeah, but I, I was like, you can watch them I later. Was messaging. We use it for Messenger because our one friend only uses that oh, yeah. for messaging, so we use it for Messenger. It was actually really nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like I was more in like tune with what Kenzie was doing and that Mark and I were more present in a lot of things. Like mm-hmm. oh, for sure. when we're with other people, we like put our phones down. Obviously now that you're a mom and a parent, mm-hmm. your phone is closer to you, if, especially when the kiddos are not with you. But it was actually really nice. Like there wasn't any drama. I didn't see anything that like, oh, why is that? Why are they doing that? Or like, you know, but the thing that I do like about social media is that you do find like help. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not the only one that's going through this. And yeah. it's really powerful to me when people show the ugly parts, you yeah. know, like, yeah. oh, it's not just Pinterest perfect. It's not Instagram beautiful. Like, my kid's an angel. Like, look at them. Like, <laughs> okay, Kenzie is great, but, like, there are still things that happen that are not great, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? They're they're frustrating. It's challenging. And parenting is the hardest thing I've, I've ever, ever done. done ever. But it's mm-hmm. the most rewarding when Oof. she looks at you and she smiles and oh. now she started to belly laugh. Like, mm. There is nothing in the world that like could prepare your heart for that. I know. Even when she keeps you up for hours screaming or crying <laughs> or whatever, like when she laughs at you and belly laughs, like, all right, whatever. It's all it's all just forgiven. It's okay. All right. Oh yeah. You know, but it's nice when you have those posts that are like, Hey, I am still this many months postpartum and life is not the same. Or mm-hmm. you see these moms that are like, I'm back in my regular clothes and I have my <laughs> Wait, wedding ring back on and I have this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't have mine. Yet, no, yet. I'm like, okay. So no, it's, true. it's nice to know that. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. It's- Social media is the worst. If you, if you want to, like you were saying, if you want to feel good about yourself, just join a colic. Um, f- co- oh gosh. So on Facebook, there's this group and it's called, colic and high spirited babies or something like that like co- oh, it's a gosh. huge long name but i joined it because i was like well you know like I, any kind of feedback i can get about reflux and that kind of thing with yeah. my baby i'd like to hear it and these moms like some of these moms they call they call their babies dragons so when their baby's like screaming all night long Aww. and they're just having really like a really hard time with their babies they call mm-hmm. them dragons and then if they have a baby that's like perfect and never has any issues and no problems they call them unicorns and mm-hmm. so like it's really cute because on this page they'll be like my dragon was up all night last night screaming and then like and now I have a dragon that you know at three years old turned into a unicorn like it's just really it's really fun to read through these posts and be like oh my gosh like that's what I'm going through or yeah I'm glad I'm not going through that or you know what I mean it's yeah. real it is really nice to like join that join those kind of pages and and I never post hardly anything but there's a few times where I've where I've posted and just been like hey what about this and right. um but yeah I rarely post it's more just reading and feeling like okay all right good I'm not the only one yeah. that's yeah. struggling with this and I think that's a problem with a lot of parenting and especially motherhood like obviously life changes for the dads but like your whole body Mm. changes your Mm -hmm. hormones especially still nursing i mean whoo holy roller coaster yeah um 
and then life in general you have that stress and then you have their stress if they're going through something and you know it is a like you said it's a roller coaster so when somebody's like life is just perfect I'm like no tell me what really is happening because that's not helping anyone like when they are telling you like listen this sucks right now and you're like oh I can relate to that Mm -hmm. that to me is a lot more meaningful than "Eh, life is beautiful like of course I want to see pictures of your beautiful baby but like tell me that sometimes they're not (laughs) nightmare they're terror like just tell me those ugly things because I feel like you know it used to be just everything was hidden and no one's talked about it at all and then you suffer alone but you're not alone right Mm -hmm. oh I had I had friends that told me you know they came out and were like oh that I had postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety or postpartum oh well I I even said before I had my baby I said I'm gonna I'm for sure gonna suffer with some kind of like like I didn't want to set myself up for failure postpartum something but I knew I was gonna suffer with some kind of postpartum because because I said because I suffered with it with each puppy I got Mm -hmm. I know this gonna sound stupid but like I each puppy I got I literally was like a week later I was like mistake mistakes were made like and I and I research (laughs) if you know me I research like for years before I even make a commitment like that because they're a big commitment they're not Mm -hmm. a kid commitment but they are like a 15 year commitment at least and so it's like deciding on a dog is a big commitment to me and whenever I got each one of my dogs I remember very vividly being like this is a mistake and like going through like a little bit of, my, my friend called it postpartum puppy depression <laughs> and so like whenever I had my baby I was like I don't foresee this being any easier and of course with right. the sleep the extreme sleep de- deprivation that you go mm-hmm. through with, with oh, a baby yeah. it was bad and then and I, I don't know if I told you but like about nine weeks was when I felt finally felt like yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. But, like, for right. nine weeks, people would be like, how are you doing? I'm like, not great. Like, like if, if you want to know, I'm going to tell you, like, right. not great. And yeah. I'm like, there's and nothing you can do about it. That's important, though, yeah. for mm-hmm. other people to hear that. Like, I feel like as parents, we're just like, yeah, that's fine. We're good. You know, like, that's fine. Yeah. I cry every day. Like, it was legitimately <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, I cried every day in the shower. Like, it was bad news. And then it was, but I mean, like, um, but I knew, like, I, I told Stephen, I was like, I just don't feel like I'm to the point where I need medication. Like, mm-hmm. I was like yes I will seek help and yes I will get medication if I felt like I wasn't going to come out of it but I felt like I'm going to come out of this like it's going to be fine I have a good support system right. and um but yeah it was I mean that was rough it was really really hard and oh my, and I and like I said I don't really think I even have like the most dragon of a baby like I feel right. like I have you know a pretty easygoing kid it's yeah. just all the feeding and her being small and trying to figure out you know everything going on with me and hormones yeah. it was like oh my gosh this is rough so anyway yeah yeah, it's like you said it's the most I tell people that too I'm like this is the most challenging job but very very rewarding at the same time like most challenging job I've ever had so Mm -hmm. and now you now you definitely feel like okay I can I can relate more like I never thought I always said I feel like I could relate because I worked with a lot of families and a lot of baby a lot of young kids Mm -hmm. but you you definitely can relate now (laughs) like now you're like okay I've been through it I've been through it and so I don't know it's and then and then I haven't been through two kids yet so then I can't yeah. really be like Ooh. now juggling two <laughs> how do you even do that like it's that blows fun. my mind I can't imagine having them that close together yeah yeah we'll go through birth stories and then I'll tell okay. you guys nope. what it's like having what was like having two under two because it was fantastic <laughs> easy, 10 easy, out of 10 no recommend <laughs> oh I mean it's great now because they're so close like yeah. he wakes up from a nap and Lily's like I'm here and he's like oh, my favorite person Aww. but it's two sets of diapers yeah it's like two different nap schedules it's when I remember you told us that you had to weed Lily to get ready for Elliot I mean yeah and that was like two full too I was like I kind of wanted to stop Lily at a year old right but I was also like I want to make sure that there is enough of a separation between the two of them where she doesn't associate that oh I'm not getting boob juice anymore mm. because of Elliot yeah. or like hey Elliot's getting some that means I get some too right and oh. I'm like I am not tandem feeding two kids people do it I don't know how people do that I don't that is not the life that I right. wanted to lead how old was she when you weaned her uh she was a year a year okay yeah I didn't remember um, any of the time how frames. did that go pretty good she uh, she I'm didn't care close to that <laughs> she didn't <laughs> care as long as she got as long as she was getting milk she didn't care You're getting so close we just to that I mean, she's eight months. Yeah. yeah. So, like, we started... And we August started is going to be here before we know it. I mean, geez. Oh, my gosh. So, we, like, transitioned her bottles during the daytime, where we slowly went, like, a little bit of milk to, like, full milk. Yeah. And then I just... I slowly got rid of the morning feeds. Yeah. So, she could sleep as long as she wanted to. And then when she woke up, here's a warm bottle of milk. Nice. And then the night feeds, I just slowly started cutting those back, too. How did that make you feel when it was done? I was like, I can sleep when I would like to sleep now. Yeah. I'm no, I like, I'm no longer attached to a person. And now that I, but then it was like, 
soon thereafter, okay, now I'm super pregnant. Yeah. And now I have to go through it all over again with another person. Yeah. I really enjoyed nursing her to sleep. Like I. It's nice because they fall asleep and then you're just like gently set in crib and run away. And I feel like we get That's a, a thing, moment. y'all. <laughs> Good sorry. for you. No, I, I, I just that. feel like, you know, you get that time to sit there and, like, look at them. And, you yeah. know, I had a friend that was pregnant before me, and she was like, I just like to watch her sleep. And before wow. I had her, I'm like, what the heck? Oh, yeah. Like, what? But then when she's asleep in your arms and you're like, you notice that her grow like, she's grown so much now. Her legs aren't on this part of your body. Or you have to, you know, change the way that you nurse her because she's gotten so big. And mm-hmm. now you really see all the hair. And it's like, I feel like you actually get to be in that moment with them. And you're like, you're, it's just the two of you in the quiet. Like, you can't be loud. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know. I think that's the part that I'm like, oh, I don't, I'm not oh. ready to give up that part. The rest of it, I'm... I think I'm, I mean, obviously I'm going to go till she's a year, but I'm like, eh, I'm kind of ready. That's so hard. I mean, like, and yeah. when I say, when I say like nursing to sleep, yes, like V will, um, my, my daughter's name is Veda, but I call her V sometimes. Um, she'll nurse to go to sleep and then she, like, I can't really usually train, sometimes I can transition her, but usually it's, it's that I want to watch her and then mm-hmm. I don't want to transition mm-hmm. her. So then it's so painful because you're like, I just... <laughs> I want to do things, but I also want to just sit here with you and let you sleep and watch you. And you're so cute. It's like, mm-hmm. it like hurts you. Like it's like, it's so painful because you're just like, I just want to not, I want, I don't want to do a contact nap, but I really do. Like, right. like, and well, it's emotionally and physically. Cause your back is like, Oh, oh yeah. Like, yes. I just want to like lay down <laughs> in a comfy position stretch. or on my stomach. I never slept on my stomach until I had kids. Like, I did not think that that was going to be, like, the big transition was going to be, like... That's funny. Oh. Cause, like, you sleep on your stomach now? Yeah. Not all the time. Oh, wow. But I it never hurts. slept on my stomach. Yeah. I don't think I can And do then it. it was just, like, oh, I can't do that while I'm pregnant, but that's fine. I never do that. Right. And then, like, one night, I was, like, I'm not getting comfy. I'm just going to sleep on my stomach. And I just passed out for, like, four hours straight. No way. And then... Like, I woke up, and my arm was completely numb. Oh, yeah. Because I had slept on it funny. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my goodness, am I going to have to get my arm chopped off? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then Nurse with one arm. <laughs> when I got more pregnant with Elliot, I'm like, crud, I can't sleep on my belly anymore. <laughs> like, that used to not be a thing that I did until it's like, oh, I no longer have a person there. That's so well, I, I will say the talk about postpartum anxiety kind of stuff too and sleeping it's, it's all related i have a bassinet that goes like right up against like on top of the bed pretty much mm-hmm. it's like this halo one that you can like swivel around and that's not the even, one that i, I gave away years, yeah <laughs> no, it wasn't caroline's as i had to no. get it i got it from someone else when i got a whole oh, bunch I of other it stuff was yours. it could have been but i told her like but she told me like three days too late yeah oh, no. so i got one but i got one but the worst part is like that's not even close enough, I guess. So because sometimes I would I would sleep with her like propped up on the pillow. Cause she had some like bad reflux too. So I would like sit with her propped up on the pillow. It's bad. Like back is best alone by by themselves in a crib, y'all. Like don't don't take what I'm saying is what I do. But like I've sl- I've had her in the bed with me, and it's the worst feeling ever because I've been trying this whole time to like get her to sleep in her right. own space, and mm-hmm. and we've done way better now. And I told Stephen, I'm like, I have so much anxiety about her being in the bed that I, there's been a few times I've woken up, and lit- probably four times now I've woken up and I've told even last night I woke up and I said, Stephen, where is she? And he said, she's in the crib. And I'm like, I panic because I think yeah. I'm gonna roll on her or I'm gonna, I had she's gonna that fall out too. of the bed. Yeah. Oh, I woke up it's one bad. night, like convinced that Lily was dead. Yeah. It's like scary. I had a dream where Lily died. And she was like, maybe a month old at this point. It's terrifying. And like, I put my hand on her. I'm like, she's not breathing. She's not breathing. What's going on? And it's like, I'm just like trying to like put my hand in her. And you don't want to actually wake him up, but you're like, please just like yeah. fling an arm. Like I woke up Lily because I was like trying <laughs> yeah. to make sure. And I'm yeah. like, okay, well you're alive, but okay, now I woke you up. Okay. That, that is my lesson to not do that That's again. Terrifying. Well, and like going back to what I said, I made a comment to my doctor about that. And she was like, you had nightmares? And I was like, yes. And she's like, is mm-hmm. that normal? I said, no. And she was like, I've never heard of that. I'm like, you've never heard of that? Well, um, she said, think- no one tells her. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think, are like, you serious? Wow. Like, I don't think I've talked to my doctor about it. Because I was like, I'm 99% sure this is just normal. Because it's like, now yeah, I'm right. caring for a person that can't do anything for themselves. Right. Yeah. But it's it was like, like, you're still in the fourth trimester. where I just it's got like, out of it. I'm okay. just out of it. Yeah, it's like right, a, yeah. a wiggly <laughs> potato the is like they can't tell you what they want they can't tell you what they need but they can scream 
We call, I think we also need to have a segment here where we all say what names we've given our babies other than their given name. Because I told <laughs> Steven, I was like, oh my gosh, we've given her so many extra names. Like, so it's so it's Veda. It's Veda May. Like uh-huh. Veda and then Veda May is her middle name. And then, so we call her Veda May. And then we also have V. But then we have, we called her Sweet Pea when she was in the womb. And I didn't right. know it was going to be a girl or boy. And so then we called her Sweet Potato now because now she's bigger. <laughs> yeah. And then we call her Angry potato, spicy potato, <laughs> irate potato, um, and then we call her tiny terrorist. I don't know if that's PG or we, not, but like we call we, her tiny terrorist. We, we call, we call the kids tiny terrorist all the time. Oh my gosh! I'm like, we will not give in to terrorism. We're not gonna give in. I saw <laughs> Steven snap. Oh, she, yeah. breaks she breaks us so much. She's like, we're like, she's a little terrorist, and um, <laughs> I don't know what else to call her. But like, there's just so many good like nicknames you can give your kids. So I don't know if you have like a bunch for Kinsey. If you do, if you guys. We always do that, though, even with dogs. Like, I have a million for Teller, too. So her full name is Mackenzie Rose, and that rarely ever gets used. So it's, I don't know what it is, but Kenzie Girl is just what I call her. I mm-hmm. have no idea why. It's just Kenzie Girl, Kenzie Girl. Now some of the babysitters even, like, text me, like, how's Kenzie Girl? Like, Cute. I don't know why. Like, obviously, we know she's a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. But we have Kenzie Girl. Um, Ken's is a lot. Um but stinker butt recently. Stinker Ooh. butt. Oh, <laughs> when they start transitioning to, the, to food, <laughs> yeah. it's a whole new flavor of bath. Ooh, yeah. They're, you know, and you see the commercials where like, eh, eh, they're gagging and I'm like, mm-hmm. no. Oh, yes. Really? And then it's like a little Hershey kiss. It's like, yes. what just happened? <laughs> what did we feed you? Yes. Oh, yeah. I laugh so much when people gag. Uh, like when people gag, it always cracks me up. I like just you. Okay. Wait. I, for the, I, I laugh laugh for so the record, she has like a third of your sense of smell. Yeah, I don't have at best. Oh, that's right. Um, it's like genetic. Oh, it's it's not even COVID. I've never had COVID or anything. Knock on wood, Jesus. But um, oh, excuse me. Reach, well, reach, this reach. Is, this anyway, is like cardboard, so but, it counts. But uh, no, so I like I've never had COVID, but like genetics, I think I just don't have a good sense of smell. My mom I doesn't either. About that. But yeah. it's that's but a I good just, thing. It, well, you'll still get some of it though. It isn't. Yeah. Is well, no, and I can't smell stuff. But like it isn't. It isn't because like there's been times where I'm like. What if I can't smell or like I'll have Steven smell like uh, the creamer in the fridge. Uh, I'm like, is this so just, good? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so that's kind of annoying. But yeah. I when I was yeah. pregnant, I couldn't smell very well. Oh, really? And it was not COVID. And I was like, Mark, is this milk good? And he's like, because I'm like, I, the last thing I need to do is. Like drink up, something spoiled. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, Being yeah. Pregnant exactly. And then vomit. Ugh, that just, <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Oh, yeah. d- <sighs> all the time with Lily. I can maybe eat. So, like there are still some foods that I'm like, mm, do I really want to eat that? Two and a half years. Well, I can oh, tell you like three years later. Oh, man. Well, no, it was just because I threw it up five times oh, in a row. And then I'm like, I do not oops. want that back in my mouth for a while. Yeah. So Lily is silly Lily. Oh, that's a recent one, isn't it? She's like, she's always kind of in silly Lily. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just like silly Lily and Lily. Occasionally now we'll pull out the full like Lily and Catherine. What a great middle name. She has a song. <laughs> so I'll go like, Lillian Catherine Ludwig. <laughs> and I, I throw Elliot Nicholas in there sometimes too. I'm trying to think of what we call her. Like when they were little, they definitely had tons of nicknames because they were burritos whenever they oh, were in yeah. their sleep sacks. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, do you have a happy burrito? Do you have a sleeping burrito? Yep. Do you have a spicy burrito? <laughs> spicy burrito. What I kind of burrito funny. did you order? Because I only want the happier sleeping burrito. <laughs> do not hand me a spicy I burrito. I rate burrito. That's what we call it. But, yeah. but yeah. I got, now the kid, both the kids are a lot better now, but I got many a death stare because the kids, like I, it'd be a very spicy burrito and Joe would be trying to calm down that spicy burrito and make it mild for like five or 10 minutes straight <laughs> and nothing would work. I, and then I would walk in the room and he would hand me the burrito and it would be a very quiet, sleepy burrito. <laughs> I will say, I don't know if you guys did the five S's or whatever, but like mm-hmm. for new parents yeah. out there, mm-hmm. like I knew about the five S's, but we, the night, the good part was when Steven and I were getting ready for Veda, we listened to several books and like, what to expect when you're expecting? Useless. That book was totally useless. I used it for like milestones of my pregnancy and that was it. Uh, yeah. I w- had all intentions of reading it and I love to read. Nope. Oh, don't worry about it. It's I useless. Didn't. I useless. listened to podcasts didn't. and that was that nope. was how we got most of our information. But The Happiest Baby on the Block, that one was a, like all the reasons why the five S's work. And like mm-hmm. that That's was a huge help to yeah. – that was the one uh, recommended to me by Caitlin. And, and she was like – her and Yeet were like, yeah, you need to – listen to this book or read this book and it was super helpful like I was like yeah just because then Steven got to like we both got to listen to like this is why the S's work and then it like really kept it in our minds why to use it because we'll sit so there what are the like, five S's Shh. so it's you like, said the, you said five S's 20 times what are the five S's <laughs> it's sway, for those of us who don't know sway mm-hmm. shush 
which are the two we use the most, right? We like sway her in our arms and don't, shush her. Don't you just naturally get a mom sway though? Like, yeah, but like I sometimes the jiggle too. I, oh, jiggle. I feel like one of the, I feel like within sway we like jiggle because like you jiggle their head from like it's like from one spot to another, and it's like it's almost like being in the car, or being in your womb. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so like sometimes like the jiggle enough to move their so head we in space. I know. Sway and jiggle. I don't. Yeah. So I think it's sway. <laughs> well, it's like there's like five Shush. e's and an m is like. It's like the f- oh, like there. It's, it's, it's this Suck. is a totally like engineering like oh, production okay. production <laughs> environment like, oh, thing. I didn't even heard that one. <laughs> it's like it's like here there we 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 hit five words that fit with the same letter and then we had to throw in this other word because <laughs> we couldn't figure out how to make it sway, work. So sway shush shush sway suck it's suck swing. is one. Yeah. I don't know. If swing is one. I what wouldn't sway one. and swing be the same thing? Swaddle swaddle swaddle's okay. one. So sway shush. Suck, swaddle, and then I always forget the last one. Let so me, if we can find it, we'll we'll say it. But like, Google. the suck is the worst one because Five my baby S. cannot keep a pacifier in her mouth. Oh my goodness, it is totally so picking up. Five S's. Five no, S's. It's like, it was like picking up your stuff. Oh, I always forget Five the last S one. Five S baby. Do you ever find like a, when you're in the mi- in the midst of like the screaming and the crying, mm. and you're like, we've tried everything, and then you're like, <laughs> that one thing that you're like, oh. We need to do that, and it yeah. works. And you're like, "Why don't we always? We always forget that one." <laughs> like, and I don't even know if sound. it's a five S. Is it sound? Yeah, so I think you're right. according yeah, to this, machine. according to the Happiest Baby blog, mm. it's swaddle, side or stomach position, side. sush, That's right. swing, and suck. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what I was replacing one of them with. I yeah. don't know either, but it's fine. I don't know, but it, it worked. It, yeah. It, works for the baby too, yeah so. it does well and, and you're right katie i thought about i thought about you the other day because the other day she, she i was looking at her <laughs> and she would so she'll like grab her eye she's done this since she was like came out of the womb she'll like grab her eye like pull it down and i'm like girl and she was getting tired and she like grabbed her eye and pulled it down and she must have stabbed her eye with her fingernail <laughs> she started screaming no. and i was like what is going on so i immediately like scoop her up and i like look at all her because i remember you saying that like kenzie at one point you like stripped her down yeah make sure she didn't have hair wrapped around mm-hmm. her finger so i'm always like so like i'm always checking for that and like they say super careful like always make sure you check that with boys and every time elliot screamed his head off i go and i check you- all of his toes <laughs> yeah. and Pro tip, point it down when you do diapers. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Yep. Took me like four tries to realize that because nobody told me. People wrote that on my diapers. Like, we didn't know that we were having a girl. And people wrote that on like four different of my diapers on my at my shower. You know how you like you Okay, we on. didn't have a shower for Elliot. And maybe that was the problem. <laughs> you need to point it down. No, but, three nephews like I do in your... <laughs> but I'm just like... <laughs> you figure it out one I'm way like, or okay. the other. <laughs> It's, it's like stop, drop, and roll. Like, I was told this was going to be a very large problem, and I have not come across it yet. Also, I've heard Huggies is supposed to be the ones for boys. Is that true? Like, those are better diapers for boys? We, we not only sponsored, use Pampers if you want. in this podcast. Oh, oh, oh. oh like, my goodness. Like, in our house, we only... sponsor you? No, no. Like, they Pampers should. should sponsor us. Now, we have done some diaper studies through yeah. VIP panelists, which yeah. has been really nice. We have been um, a month a size off when it was the it was like we're yeah. a size two I think she was a size one we're in a size three and now I'm like come on God. he he got into off. two size four studies pretty much back to back and he was in for a third one and I'm like boy is gonna bust out of these like no yeah. also my family was going to kill me because they're like I am not tracking diaper changes anymore oh, yeah. we need we need to do one of those and by the time I get around to it it's gonna be like oh we don't need your kid anymore yeah <laughs> but, but I need to um, do one of those studies you know what my friend sorry to your pampers but mm-hmm. that's what we would buy and they're hella expensive I mean diapers in general are my friend gave me this pro tip at Sam's mm-hmm. Sam's member Mark's diapers mm-hmm. are amazing and I know each kid you know, yeah they each work for them but she has they're amazing we haven't yeah. had i don't want to say it i'm gonna jinx it yeah haven't had one blow true blowout since you know i mean obviously there's times where she's backed up and then it all comes out and i don't think any diapers gonna no, hold no. that in but when they're when they are like pooping two or three times a day as yeah. opposed to like the seven or eight times a day right. one of them is going to go terribly wrong right steven and i argue about this so he had a blowout today and i was like i'm sorry it's probably me but he like puts her diaper on so tight and i'm like dude like 
you've obviously never been a woman and have to have like something tight around your belly and then like ticked off about it. Like I'm like, like my leggings right now. Yeah, exactly. Like, like oh god, I'm in pregnancy leggings because like I'll never probably get oh. rid of these because they're so comfortable. Yeah, that's and like the worst thing about going back to work was like I need to buy like actual jeans because I need like the pockets and the loops so I can like hold all my work stuff on Ugh. it. And I'm Mark like, this is so literally s- the worst. Just get a belt like this. But yeah. so like no. You know, so yeah, that, like the transition out of pregnancy clothes, like nobody's super Ooh, warned you about that. And you're no. like, no, like get into pregnancy clothes as soon as you can. I'm just going to wait till my second one. Because <laughs> they're so comfy. But I mean, and I probably, I wore pregnancy pants for quite a while after Lily and Elliot were born. Cause I was like, I have to like figure out what my new size is mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And it's impossible to buy women's jeans. This is another thing that I think people do not tell you about. It's like, oh, I wear my pregnancy stuff, and then, you know, oh, all of a sudden my jeans fit. And, my, and I'm like, who actually does this? I have, a, I have a few friends. <laughs> I Ooh. still have, like, <laughs> kind of the worst. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about them. And we don't talk about Bruno. I know. Let's say that. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> because it's, like, it's, it's hard especially when you're nursing oh. because you're hungry all the time Girl. and your hormones are a roller coaster. <laughs> and I'm just like, and it's like, Oh, make sure that you only have like healthy food and snacks in the house. Well, how long is going to take me to get that healthy food and snack together? Like, I can still kill some almonds. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially <laughs> like with two kids in the house yeah. and it's like, okay, I've got to try to feed myself while trying to keep Elliot away from Lily because for about the first two months of life, were like like I did not put Elliot on the floor if Lily was up. If Lily was awake, he was like in my arms or in a pack and play, like somewhere where she could not get to him. Yeah, right. That makes sense. That's what I have to well, do. She, with well, well, no. Dog. The plan was to put <laughs> the plan was to put him in a pack and play until we realized that Lily was being quote super generous with her toys Uh-oh. and would She's chuck toys <laughs> into the pack and play so her brother could play with them well so i that thought was so sweet i i was doing it with teller the other day i was like i was like hey uh, my dog and mm. i was like go place like he knows to go to his bed but like he gets like he's a border collie so he gets like really excited about in his brain like what should i be doing and i'm like go place and he's like where's that and i'm like well, you know where it's at and he was flipping it's around like a toddler. and he looked up at the pack and play like in here and i'm like absolutely <laughs> not i was so scared it was so scary because i was like that's where we keep her so like he's keeping away i thought for sure he was gonna jump into the pack and play and i was like steven oh my gosh like and it's, it's just like, like we'll do that with geez. lily sometimes i'm like lily put it in the trash can and she's like like we haven't done this 50 times in the trash can in the sink no 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 in the sink <laughs> the in the tra- trash can good toddler helping good job yeah no, i'm like sure. i know we're working on it oh that's cute it's funny though it's like oh my gosh it really like they they, they called i'm sorry like dogs are the only thing i know and i've i've trained oh dogs i stuff. compare the kids to dogs all the time it's fine but it's like i don't have dogs well that's what they say they're like they're like uh three-year-olds in a fur coat and it's really true like literally the dog has like the mindset of a three-year-old so you have to be like their whole life so you have to be like Okay, they continually forget that, like, this is not what you're <laughs> supposed to be doing. Like, I, I found him, like, chewing on something the other day. and Or I, I, I left something on the couch because I was just like, I'm tired. And I left my food plate on the couch. And I never did that before, you know, whatever. And he's, like, yeah. over there. He ate half my food. And I was like, it's not his fault. I haven't trained him to leave food alone because I just kept the food out of his reach any other right. time. Yeah. And now when I have a kid, it's like, how's this going to work? Like, it's going to be... An, an adventure and I went I went over to your house that one time and I thought about that because you said you know, Katie said she didn't have she doesn't have dogs and I remember she put I didn't have my baby yet she, I was she wasn't born yet but she put Kinsey on the ground and I was like she put her on the ground I was like the dog's gonna <laughs> yeah. the dog's gonna run over top of her and I was like she doesn't have a dog like I, yeah. I was sitting there like oh my gosh there's so much more I have to worry about with this dog running around well like, that was like but your your dogs are good dogs like yeah so and I don't <laughs> with, I don't worry whenever I bring Kenzie over you're like oh and I'm like fine she's fine and i understand yeah. like you truly never know what's gonna happen right but and it's like the big difference like our dogs were fine like when lily was super little i was very cognizant of where are the dogs and where is lily right if like i have to go run up to the bathroom like okay lily mm-hmm. is on her play mat one dog sleeping on the couch one dog sleeping in her bed i'm gonna run to the bathroom when i come back everybody should still be about where they are mm-hmm. as the kids got older that turned into well, i'm gonna go to the bathroom dogs you have to get out of the living room yeah so i make sure that you are in two separate spaces you get incrementally more passive about it and i don't i want to try to be like really cognizant about it because right. like it, in a split second something bad can happen and you just right. got to be well, really really and- careful but like as you get more trusting i mean yeah. i definitely 
trust him more than I did before I had her. But I'm like, or, you know, or the first couple weeks or months, you know, I've had her. But it's like, I still am like the same way where I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be in a separate room, they're set. They're totally like safe spaces. Well, I'm like, our dogs aren't border collies, so they're not super high energy. (laughs) They can be super high energy if like we're like, hey, let's go hiking for a week. They're like, yes, let's do that. We're going to hike 10 miles every day and we're going to love it. But then they'll, they'll be couch potatoes when we're home. So I don't necessarily have to worry about like them getting a wild hair up their butt and deciding that they're going to zoom through the living room. Yeah. They'll like zoom through our bedroom. They sometimes they do, but not as badly. You just don't know how much aware. I'm always like, how much awareness does he have of your dog does not have rear end awareness. He had, Hey, get out of here. (laughs) He has has rear end awareness. That's all I worked on. Her first baby. Come on now. That's all I worked on with him, but he doesn't have awareness of the kid as well. Like I worry about him having awareness of like, is he going to step on her? Like, is it going to matter to him that he like lays on top of her? And like, so far he's been really good about, knowing where she is in space i think but i'm just making sure that like really i'm very cognizant of like anything can happen he's very mm-hmm. much a toddler in a fur coat with a full <laughs> set of teeth like with well, a full right. set of sharp teeth right. like the, the, the big thing that we have to worry about now is if the dogs like because the dogs figured out as lily was getting bigger where their safe places were because originally it was like i can be anywhere and the kid can't go anywhere so it's fine yeah. but as lily started rolling okay if i'm up on the couch she can't get to me well, Lily starts crawling up, like pulling herself up mm-hmm. on things. Okay, now I have to go to the bedroom and I'm safe in the bedroom or like another portion of the couch and it'll take her like five minutes to get over here. Yeah. But now the dogs are so chill with the kids that like Clara will just sleep on the couch and Elliot will be like, oh, there's a doggy. Like <laughs> the word that he uh-huh. says the most is Clara. And I'm like, Aww. screw you, kid. <laughs> Clara, You Clara. destroyed me. <laughs> you destroyed and, me. Um, Yep. I carried your big ass the whole nine months. 